Welcome back. Today, we want to talk about something that you may all be thinking about, because if you're considering a career relaunch, the most popular time yeah. to relaunch is in the fall, because we've had this summer to relax, at least in concept. And now our children are going back to school. It's a great time for us to think about our next step. Right. And you may be thinking, Who'd want to hire me after a 5, 10, 15, 20 year break? Well, today we're here to tell you the three things that will make you hireable after you've taken a career break. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's dive in. Yeah. Right? So the first one is you have to be able to tell a good story. Now, if you've taken our, or watched many of our other videos, we do talk about, you know, having yes. a good story and connecting the dots. So yeah. let's just elaborate on that a little it's bit. It's really important to, I mean, because if you just picture it as, as a metric, You've got your foundational experience, yes. which is where you had your career before you took your break. Then you have your break. And during that break, you've done things. You've done things as a volunteer, as a caregiver, as a leader in your community. Those things need to be captured. And then what you need to do is connect the dots between the two. So this early experience I had as a marketing communications professional, right. and I was I worked my way up to director, and then I took a career break for eight years. And during those years, I was the communications coordinator for the PT coordinator for the PTO. Mm -hmm. I did a newsletter for my place of worship or for a sporting team. Yeah. I was on a foundation board writing grants. I continued to not only develop and hone my communication skills, but I learned some new ones because I learned how to use constant contact or MailChimp mm -hmm. to do newsletters. Um, I learned how to use Canva to make some of my communications a little bit more attractive. So it's connecting the dots literally between those foundational work experiences and those things that you did that were unpaid. Right. And we always like to say this because this is something that I think a lot of our students grapple with, our clients grapple with, mm -hmm. really looking at those things that you did in your opt-out years, you'll often discount things and say to yourself, I didn't really do much. I was really just focused on watching the kids or I was just caretaking for mm -hmm. the people around me. Really stop yourself when you get into that line of talking and speaking yeah. to yourself because it's often untrue and digging in and really looking at what did you do mm -hmm. is important. So you can look through our YouTube channel and you can definitely find other videos that can help you with the spotlight on exactly. those opt out years and how to be able to ex mm -hmm. explain them in a way that makes sense to a hiring manager. And just so you know, if you believe it and you tell it well, I'm going to, I'm going to believe it. I'm yes. not going to care about the break if you tell the story well. And then there are three ways to tell the story. Right. So the first, the most obvious is your resume, right? Right. And you're not going to just dust off the resume from 11 years ago and put something new at the top. You're going to start from scratch. You're going to look at some examples that we provide mm -hmm. in some of our programs. You can look online for what does a current resume look like? Right. I'll tell you right now, it's not Times New Roman with a lot of hard lines. There's on. no word objective. Right. Anywhere. That's exactly right. So make sure you do a little informing. And we certainly have information out there about how to do a great resume too. Mm -hmm. And you're telling that same story. You're talking boldly about your experience, both foundationally when you were working mm -hmm. and during this break when you might have been volunteering. And you're going to present that information the same way. So when I talk about my experience using the same example as a marketing communications director, I talk about the reach that I had, mm -hmm. the number of subscribers, the number of, of um, conversions, the big, this growth of the audience, whatever it is, those same kind of metrics. Think about the things that you did as a volunteer. How many grants did you award? Mm -hmm. um, what was the reach of your newsletter right. that you did for the PTO? What was um, the result of a marketing brochure that you did for an event? Sometimes it's a little bit of a stretch. We want you to make that stretch. It's yeah. important for you to show in the same language what you've accomplished. Yeah. So that's the first way that you tell your story, right? right? So you tell it on that resume. Yeah. And then you also need to get yourself onto LinkedIn. You right? really have to be on LinkedIn. It's a non-negotiable right now. Practically 100% of people at some point in a job interview will check your LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So the LinkedIn is another great place to tell your story. Mm -hmm. If you've done a good job on your resume, converting it to a LinkedIn is pretty easy. It's just a little bit more conversational, a little chattier in that about section, as opposed to a little more formal in the resume. You're going to want to have a great photo of yourself. That's, that's you in, a, you know, smiling, looking like someone I want to work with. Um, you're going to want to put a banner up there, that very top image that might, might just be a pretty picture, but maybe even better. Maybe it shows you doing the work that you've done or some image that reflects the work that you want to do. 
And really important for LinkedIn is it's not just a static page, it's a dynamic platform. So once you've created that LinkedIn, you want to find more people to tell your story to. Right. So you want to connect with people. You want to connect with recruiters, um, hiring managers. You want to follow the companies that interest you so that you are first in the know and they have a big change that might result in them maybe hiring more people. So the dynamics of the LinkedIn page are really important. Mm -hmm. And then all of those things can be used when you're networking and on an interview, right? Exactly, right. So once you've got the resume, you've got the LinkedIn, and now you're sitting in front of someone, that's your time to shine in telling the story. Mm -hmm. And if you've created a good resume and a good LinkedIn, the elements of the story are there for you to, to tell it and to tell it well. And we're here to tell you, because we have been doing this for a very long time, that you will be believed that the hiring manager, in fact, a good candidate who's very well prepared to interview and network after a career break is so good at it that the hiring manager or the network connection doesn't even think about their career break anymore. It's just part of the continuum of their experience. It's not a big red flag. Yes. Yeah. You know, you may be feeling a little bit overwhelmed even just hearing all of that information because that might not be where you are today when you are visiting us. A big piece of what actually is what makes people successful is building back that confidence. But building comes from the doing and getting these things moving and going in the right direction. But it also comes from practice. It comes from putting yourself out there, Mm -hmm. learning from that, maybe failing, and then regrouping and getting yourself back out there again. It also comes from putting really good, strong people around you that are going to help you towards this goal. Um, One of the things that we have, a product that we have is our starter course. And our starter course, if you are someone who's out there listening today, that is just at the very beginning of the return to work process. And it is a process Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a very personal process. And we know that from the experience that we have working with so many of our students. Taking our starter course could be a great option for you because it has you start to look at the internal Mm -hmm. things. And ultimately, when you are sitting in front of someone and you feel confident and you are telling a compelling story and they can read all of that energy from you, that makes you hireable. Mm -hmm. I want someone who believes in what they're saying. And in order to be able to do that, especially when you've been somebody who's probably been holding up and taking care of a lot of a a lot of people um, for the last few years or many many years of your life, um, you might not even know where to begin. And so that is an option for you is to really start to take a look at some of the internal piece of this to help you build back your confidence. Because the process is personal and professional. You just start with that personal piece. Yes. So um, we'll make sure there's a link to that program right there in the notes. And we'll hopefully see some of you in that program. It is a fully portable program. We have lots of other free content out there. And again, we'll be back next Monday. We hope to see you again. Yes. Thanks.